Have you ever enjoyed the shade from under a tree or picked a delicious apple to eat? I'm sure you already know that oxygen we breathe comes from trees. Trees have so many uses. Just look around your current location from housing, furniture, transportation, education, entertainment, and advertising. Trees are a renewable source. As long as when we cut one down, we replace it with another to grow back. Generally, the paper you write on and the books you read every day are made from trees. That's because paper tends to be made from the pulp of wood. The manufacturing process would look something like step one, extraction and preparation of raw material. Step two, preparation of pulp. And step three, processing of pulp and paper production. Welcome back to Design and Technology On Demand. My name is Charlotte and I make weekly videos helping you to succeed in your design and technology GCSE. I just want to say a massive thank you to anybody that has already hit that like and subscribe button. Let's start with the paper manufacturing process. Firstly, trees are cut down and then transported to a paper mill. At the mill, the trees, or now logs, have to be debarked. Bark is the protective layer that coats the tree. To debark these logs, they first have to be cleaned and cut before being sent through a rotating drum that will knock off the bark layer. Some mills then send the logs through a chipper to break the logs into tiny pieces, known as wood chips. Now preparation for the pulp can begin. There are two ways for the pulp that can be produced, either mechanically or chemically. Both methods extract fibres from the logs, which is what makes up the pulp. Within the mechanical method, grindstones are used to tear the wood fibres apart in water. Whereas the chemical method, which is more widely used as it is more energy efficient, use large tanks full of various chemicals. These tanks pressure cook the wood chips into a mushy fiber mass. Both methods produce pulp that is then washed and screened to remove any impurities. Now in order for us to get that white paper, we have to bleach the grey mucky pulp into a white pulp. The next step is to add fillers and dyes. It all depends on the type of paper being produced. At this stage, we are able to change the texture, quality and colour of the paper. Now we need to send the pulp through a series of rollers of pulp to paper. The purpose of these many sets of rollers can be to spread the pulp, remove any excess water, flatten, smooth, dry and then to be wound into a huge roll of paper, ready then to be sized, printed and cut for use. Wow, so that's a lot of information to take in. But let's quickly note down the five main steps. Handling of raw materials. Changing wood chip to pulp. Washing and bleaching. Adding any additional fillers like dyes. Processing pulp to paper. The role of paper has changed thanks to the enhancement of digital age. However, it is still valued across the world. Each year, an average of 400 million metric tons of paper and board is produced primarily from the United States and China. Okay, so we know where in the world produces the most amount of paper, but is it just trees and what type of trees are used? So we've looked at the process of how paper is produced from trees, but paper can come from other plant fibers, such as cotton, linen, straw, bamboo, and let's not forget recycled paper products. With recycled paper products being the most recycled material across the globe, as it can be used up to seven times, it's no wonder that 73% of paper is sourced from recycled paper products, collected and reused in paper mills, leaving only 27% of paper coming from virgin material. It will have to be cleaned and de-inked before it makes its way into the pulping stage. Okay, so it is great to reuse recycled paper products so they don't end up in landfill. Plus, stop us cutting down any trees that are not needed. But why use other plant sources? Let's look further into linen, which is a natural fibre that comes from flax plants. Let's compare it to our everyday paper that we use in our printers. This paper is made from wood pulp and when it gets wet, it disintegrates and turns into mush. Paper made from linen, which can be also referred to as rag paper, doesn't tend to fall apart when it gets wet. Think about the time when you left that fibre in the jean pocket and you put them in the washing machine. When the machine finished and you finally retrieved that note, it was wet but still intact. So I hope you can see that by using different plant fibres can actually affect the strength and the quality of the paper. So we have compared linen to trees. Now let's look at how it differs from tree to tree. These can be categorised into either softwood or hardwoods. Overall, softwoods like pines and firs produce long and strong fibres. They're smoother, transparent and lend themselves better to printing, hence why they are used for boxes and packaging. On the other hand, hardwoods like beech and birch tend to produce a weaker paper as they contain shorter fibres but they give paper a smoother printing surface. For that reason, sometimes hardwood and softwood fibres can be mixed to create strength and printability. Let's see if you really understood the information from this video. Try answering this question. What is the benefit of using linen for paper? 
make sure you share your answer in the comment box below. Thank you for watching this video and you've got this exam. You're well on your way to achieving that level nine grade. If you haven't already, make sure you do hit that like and subscribe button. Also, check out some of my other videos linked in the description box below. See you in the next video.